going on guys? It's Nick from Surfcast in the Island and today I'm going to be talking about how to target striped bass from inlets. This is going to be a three-part video that is a continuation on my previous video I did on how to target striped bass from the open beach. Um, personally, in my opinion, if someone asks me where would you fish if you had one choice and why for striped bass, it would be inlets. And the reason being is um, the fish don't want to be there per se all the time, but they have to be there. What I mean is it's a one way in, one way out type of outlet. The fish have to pass on through an inlet to get to the back bays and they have to pass out to get back into the ocean. Um, so now if you take into consideration if you're fishing an open beach spot you have or back bay spot that you have, nothing in particular, just as a generalization, um, the fish have to be there pretty much by choice um, and one of the uh, confounding factors is there has to be bait as well as structure um, as opposed to an inlet where you can have structure and no bait and the fish will still be there. Um, now I'm not saying that okay you don't need bait or whatever of course bait helps uh, passing on through an inlet. Um, but again, from personal experience, I prefer inlets over any, anywhere else per se. Um, and some things to look for, obviously structure I've talked about, but how do you go about locating structure in inlets? Um, no inlet in particular, I don't really want to give too many spots away. I know I've had complaints from people. Um, there are three things, three main things I look for. Uh, you could visually see and you don't really need to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. Um, the first thing is look for buoy markers leading out of the inlet. These are trails that boats will follow um, to avoid shallow water. It's pretty much the middle of the channel. So what does that mean? The buoy markers pretty much resemble where the drops are. Okay, And like I've mentioned in previous lectures is that striped bass are structure oriented fish. They prefer rough bottoms with holes, ditches, um, drops, whatever you want to call them, over flat bottom. Anything that is not flat is considered structure and they will take that any day over something that is not. Okay, so that is one sign looking for buoy markers and fishing around the buoy markers. Another sign is um, changing water color, the water color change. Um, whether you guys have been on a boat or you've been surf casting, I'm sure you've seen, you know, lighter shades of water and darker shades of water. It's pretty self-explanatory. The lighter shades are going to be where it's shallow, the flats, and whatnot. And the darker water is going to be where the deeper water is, the holes, the cuts, the bars, and whatnot. Um, again, that's pretty self-explanatory. So a final key thing I would look for when I'm uh, targeting striped bass and inlets would be what I would call rip lines. These are pretty much caused by a change in depth contour. So shallow water is typically going to have more of a ripple than deeper water. Deeper water is going to be flat. The reason being is when you have a depth change, that water is being forced up, causing the water to ripple in the shallow water. So what does this mean? You want to fish the edges of the rips because like a sandbar, which it pretty much is, um, in some situations is that the fish will hang on the edge of the bar and they'll wait or the edge of a drop and they'll wait whether it's an incoming outgoing tide depending on which phase of the tide is productive to where you're fishing in an inlet because that also matters as well because these fish will stage up in certain areas okay that's what they're going to key in on um and that's pretty much it in terms of you know the three key signs buoy markers water shading, the change in water shading, and rip lines. Um, it's similar, the last one, rip lines, is very similar to uh, finding white water on an open beach with a sandbar and how that pushes water up. That's not the uh, purpose of this discussion. So if you're still someone that struggles in locating structure, whether it's the open beach, inlets, or back bays, um, I would highly recommend going at the lower ends of the tide, being the bottom of the tide, the last two of the outgoing and the first two of the incoming, particularly around the moon as well. And the reason being is the moon tides, the new moon and full moon typically have the strongest push and pull in terms of incoming and outgoing water. And 
that concept will pretty much be a catalyst. Um, it'll accent these signs I look for, would you say, whether it be, you know, change in water depth, uh, change in shading, um, locating these rip lines. Um, obviously the buoy, it won't make a difference for the buoys um, when you're trying to locate those drops because that's just a marker. You're still gonna have to know how to read water in terms of shading. Still have to know um, what rip lines look like and why they're there and why the fish relate to them, so on and so forth. But um, last but not least, if someone were to ask me what lure I would use that's probably most consistent in an inlet, um, from personal experience, I would have to go with the bucktail. Um, and the reason being is, um, especially when you're fishing around the moon and heavy currents like I've discussed previously, there are very few lures that are successful in such a tight window and fit that niche, would you say? Many other plugs tend to tumble and spin and not getting that foot, foot and a half, two feet off the bottom type of strike zone like the bucktail. Um, it's just so productive. It, it's, um, it's so consistent under a wide variety of conditions. I've, I've mentioned the bucktail. I've had a bucktail talk in previous lectures. But um, that's what you really want to focus on in an inlet. These fish aren't going to be hovering around when the tide's ripping, you know, halfway in the top half of the water column. They're going to be in the bottom half and sometimes right on the bottom if it's really pulling or pushing. So um, that's pretty much my experiences with fishing inlets. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys could take something away from this, please like, comment, hit that subscribe button and follow me on Instagram at surfcasting underscore the underscore island. Thank you and have a nice day.